Hello everybody, it's AJ here again, and in this video I want to talk about Python for loops. Now, if you guys watched my last video in the Python tutorial, Python playlist, which probably hopefully is linked below or linked to the right of you, then you saw that I went over the while loop condition. And while loops are used to specify a while, um, a while condition in programming. And what that means is, a while condition is something that can continuously happen for a long amount of time, or you don't know if a condition will only happen once, happen um, thousands or millions of times, maybe even infinitely, or zero times. And as we'll find out with a for loop, a for loop always always executes a set number of times. You you know what you're doing in your program. You know exactly how many times you're going to program something. You're going to run your program. For instance, maybe you have a program that every day, that every school day, you know, it does your homework. It does your homework for you or checks your schedule. And so you want this program to check um, your, your schedule, what you're doing on the school days. So it sees if you're busy or not. So you know your program is going to run for the five days of that week of that week, and then it's going to you know, and then you're going to have to run it for the next week as well. A while loop, you know, depends on your conditions. So you may say, you know, while I'm not tired, keep running, and you may not be sure when you could get tired because it could because you don't know maybe about your energy levels, what you ate, or how you feel that day. But you can just keep on. You're gonna while you feel like you're you feel good. You're gonna keep on running. A while you know you're in a good relationship. You're gonna keep on going out with that special someone, if you like that. So without further ado, let's get into a nice code example. So um, Python t syntax for a for loop is very nice, and they make it extremely simple. You start out with the f the the, for the keyword of the video for, and then you want to give, and then you want to immediately say a variable name. You can say any kind of variable name, just like you can name any variable in Python. I'll call it var, and you then you want to say the keyword in, in, and then you want to say the the um, you want to call this method called range. Range is a built-in Python method, and you can use it with a lot of things. So here we so what you do for range is you can give range three different types of parameters and I'm going to show you that first. I'm going to show um the the one parameter first or it when it only has one parameter first. As you note after after I did the for var in range 5 and I gave it the parameter 5, I did a colon because you know this is a um I'm I this is you know kind of this is a, a structure in Python and so I need a colon and the colon immediately means that in the next line I'm going to indent and put my code here and so what I'm saying here is I'm saying for this variable in the range of five so what this what this range is saying it's saying give me a range of five give me um, an iteration of five numbers and by default range is going to get start up to zero and it's going to go to five but it's not going to include five so the range, so the range is going to go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is five times because you count 0 and you go 1, 2, 3, 4. All counting in a computer usually starts actually almost will always start at 0 because of binary. Binary, if you know binary, it's all a binary um, number system. It just has zeros and ones or on and off. The off being 0 on being one but I ramble on so much but I just want you guys to understand so there you go those ra the range will tell you how often this for loop how many times this for loop is going to execute and I'm use it I can use I have to make I have to declare this variable here I called it var you can call it x or anything you want and what it does is it keeps track of the range or the the looping structure that I'm in and I also can use that to pr I also can use this to my advantage so for instance I'm going to loop var I'm going to print out var every time my loop runs now I told you my loop is going to run five times I know that it's gonna go it's gonna and every time it runs it's gonna print out the value of var and automatically var is gonna get incremented for me let me run my program just to show you guys right here so as you can see I ran my program and I got zero one two three four 
just like I said. So what happened is my program did run five times. It started at zero, did a uh, loop through zero, then went to one, then went to two, then went to three, went to four, which is pretty nice. So I was so as you can see, my var variable got updated every time, and I just wanted. To note to you that var automatic the variable I declare in here is automatically made an integer I can you know I can print you know whatever var um, I can square it and so I can get all the squares of 0 through 4 which is 0 1 2 3 4 9 16 or not 0 1 4 9 16 I don't know what I'm doing guys no I'm kidding so as you can see the for loop has a lot of power it's used when you know how many times this something is going to increment but I also wanted to note you how easy it is to add varying things to the for loop. For instance, hey, AJ, I don't want my for loop to start at zero and go to some certain number. I want it to go, I want it to start at any number and end at and end at some other number. So I can do that. So what you can do here is you can use the range method to give it two parameters. So for instance, here I'm going to give it 20 and I'm going to give it 10. And I want you guys to think about what's going to happen, but essentially what's happening now, since I've given it two parameters, the range method recognizes that the first parameter is my start and the second parameter is my stop. So let's run this bad boy. It should start at 10 and end at 19. Remember, it doesn't include 20. And it does this so you it does this so you can it may seem a little bit confusing in the meaning, but it does this so you can think easier because the loop is running 10 times. So you can just do the simple subtraction because it does count 10 as a method so as you can as a um, count so it starts at you know 10 10 squared and goes all the way up to 19 squared 361 it did not go up to 20 squared which is simply 400 so that's really cool you know I'm able to choose my start and stop positions and also I can add another parameter range the third and final parameter and something that you may we may have taken for granted or not thought of in this case is that for instance the range my for loop is always incrementing by one right I prove I just it always goes up it always goes up by one you know it goes up it goes 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 you know I we don't really care We're, we've always been just doing it by one and that's the default of the range it will always go up by one but you can also change that if you give it a third parameter and what you want to do is when you give it a third parameter you just you can give it a third parameter and you can say how much you want it to increment by each time. So in this case, I'm going to give it three. So that means I'm going to start at 10, I'm going to go to 20, not including 20, and I'm going to increment by three. So right now, so what should happen is I'm going to start at 10, I'm going to print out my variable, then I'm going to increment by three, so 10 plus three is 13, then I'm going to print out 13, then I'm going to increment again, 13 plus three is 16, going to print out 16 and then I'm going to increment again while I'm at the end of the while loop and then I'm 16 plus 3 is 19 I'm going to print that out and then I'm going to go again 16 19 plus 3 is 22 and then my loop's going to stop because I'm over 20 so let's run this and hopefully we get that input and just like I said I hope I explained that very clearly so I can go from 16 10 to 13 to 16 to 19 and I can do full loops probably like that Something I also want to mention is I can't do um, decimal numbers or I can't put floats in a range. It will give me an error. It will say, you know, type error, float object cannot be interpreted as an integer. It means that this method only takes integers. That is something to note to also. But something I also want you to note is let's say I wanted to go from 100 to 0. Would it be possible to go down? Well, gee, AJ, it sure is. All you got to do is give my incrementer a negative number, and that's still an integer too. And that will this will go from 100 to 5 because it won't count 0. So if I run this program, as you can see here, I get 100, blah, blah, blah. I get 100, and then all these nice numbers as well. I don't know if you guys can see that that well. But trust it's it's pretty beautiful you know what the world what these people make in this python program so I, I can go up in my for loop and i can go down in my for loop so if you're counting down if you're counting up you can do either very easily and so that's the basic for loop here you got your four keyword you got your four keyword you got your variable that um keeps track of the number you're at in the range you may not need this variable 
you may not need this variable. Maybe you just want to print. Maybe you just want to print out different strings, or you want to just do some calculation, and you want to just multiply something five times. Then you then you don't even need this variable, but you need it for the syntax of Python. So Python accepts this for loop. It's required. Then you need your in, and it's going to be in the range of whatever you do. And remember, and you can give it up to three parameters. If you give it one parameter, by default, it starts at zero and inc increments by one up till the number you get to. So that that's you know that this is what you would do if you just wanted something to run ten times and you didn't care about it. Um, you can give it a second parameter. When you give it two parameters, it's the start and stop position. And when you give it a third parameter, it's the start is the first one, stop is the second one, and increment. Or if you want to increment slash decrement, decrement if it's negative. It, that's your third parameter, and you can use all those to create awesome for loops and do some funky math, and you know, you know, really control the power of your loops. And just remember, you need a colon because this is a Python structure, and then you need you can do all this code in here, and then when you're done with your for loop, you know, you unindent and you print, you know, done. Um, let me just make this two. And then I can print done. And then as you can see, I ran my loop twice because it was in range two. And then I got out of my loop and I proceeded down the code and I printed out done at the end in line seven. So that's pretty nifty. It allows me to, for loops are very powerful in code and they're used way more often than while loops. So it's very important to understand that. If you have any questions, feel free to post down below and I'll answer your questions. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day.